that they will head back to Seattle all alone atop the Pac-12 standings. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Easton Stadium. I'm Beth Mullins, along with two-time Olympic gold medalist Michelle Smith. We've seen two All-Americans, three All-Americans now in the circle for these two sides, anticipating another terrific matchup here this afternoon. Well, the strength of Pac-12 softball has to do with the arms in the circle, and we're going to see that this afternoon as well. Gabby Plain has been outstanding for Washington. 260 strikeouts plus on the year. Fastest Husky to 50 wins in a Husky uniform. So just unbelievable ability to move the ball around, drop that ball off the table. So look for Plain to try to get those Huskies into that number one spot going back to Seattle. Megan Faramo will make the start here for UCLA. Rachel Garcia is in the lineup as the DP, but you see the strikeout numbers, uh, the uh, K to walk ratio for Faramo best in the business. Best in the business, Beth, and she just has this innate ability to move the ball through the zone, locate her pitches on the edges, which is so important. Top 10 in ERA, just gives up a, about three hits every seven innings pitched. The two-time All-American Sis Bates at the top of the order for Washington, and then some home run power with Klingler, Reynolds, and Flores. You see 59 homers this year for the Huskies. They have already hit three through the first three games this weekend. Beautiful day, partly sunny skies in Southern California. As Faremo and Bates, the All-American matchup will get things started. The three games this weekend, they did not see each other last year. The pandemic uh, canceled that. So their last to get together prior was that epic World Series showdown in the national semifinals that the Bruins won on a Rachel Garcia walk-off. Bates slaps it to second. Kinsley Washington has it over to Delaney Wiz, one down. Some changes around the infield for the Bruins with Wiz at first, Washington at second, and Tessa Malaulu will get the start at third base today. Of course, the ever-present Bree Perez, one of the best shortstops in the country, the anchor of that infield. Here's Bailey Klingler, not one, but two home run jacks yesterday in the doubleheader. Batting 500 in the series with a couple of home runs and three runs batted in. For the junior from Houston, Texas. Pulls that one foul. It's a very disciplined Washington team, has the ability to Work counts deep. They walk almost uh, as much as they strike out, which means that they are uh, really good with pitch selection. Torino, the sophomore from Vista, California, north of San Diego. Former prep national player of the year arrived at UCLA, the national freshman of the year. In 2020, when Rachel Garcia was away from UCLA with the U.S. Olympic team, she stepped in as the ace and now sharing duties this season. The Bruins have stuck to their game plan of only starting Garcia once for their uh, four-game Pac-12 weekend, so hence Faremo getting the second start here today. Skies that out to Maya Brady in center field, two out. Rachel picked up the win on Friday, threw a couple of innings yesterday, is in the lineup as the DP today. former National Player of the Year and the most outstanding player of that 2019 World Series as the Bruins went on after they beat Washington to beat Oklahoma for the National Championship.
Sammy Reynolds is the reigning Pac-12 player of the week after she bashed three home runs in their series win over Oregon. The Ducks, by the way, in a particularly difficult stretch for them. They lost again today to Stanford. So Washington, UCLA, and Stanford all back to back to back. They've lost eight of 12 to tumble out of the race. As these two teams have uh, taken charge. Good pitch there from Faremo, one and two. Yeah, Faremo has a lot of different tools. She can go up, down, off speed, and obviously with the strength and power of Sammy Reynolds, trying to take it away from her, dumping that off speed in. Sammy's Sammy having a career year you know, with those 10 home runs, the 33 runs batted in. Yeah, Beth, and, and not your your prototypical power hitter that might be big in stature. I mean, she's got a lot of speed. She hits for that power and average. Four for nine so far in the UCLA series. Count goes full. Go after it, foul tip. Alyssa Garcia hangs onto it, and it's three up and three down. How about Megan Faremo coming back with that rise ball in the outside corner? Look at the reaction. Faremo loving it. Bruins picking up the bats. for the first time to face Washington and a, uh, wow, a sudden change for the Bruins. They thought they were going to be seeing Gabby playing with this lineup. Look at the damage they've been doing in first innings this season with the plus 37 run differential led by Washington, Perez, Jordan, and Garcia right at the top. Uh, but it is not Gabby playing in the circle. It is Kelly Lynch who gets the call here as the late starter for Washington. So when they handed in their lineup card, they had Gabby playing in the flex, and Sarah Willis also listed as the, uh, the right fielder and the one that would be flexed out for the pitcher. But this is Kelly Lynch in the circle for the Bruins. She has been hitting through the first three games. This her first appearance of the series in the circle. Former National Prep Player of the Year out of Georgia. So we uh, were not informed pregame of the reason for the switch here, but Kelly Lynch is five and five on the season. This will be her 12th start with an ERA a shade under four. Oh, Beth, she's a rise ball pitcher. She's got a little bit of a screwball that she'll throw against the lefties, away from them, into the righties. And Coach Tar likes to call it elite rise ball stuff when she can command it. She's also a hitting pitcher. So, a lot of talent, but yeah, that's a big surprise seeing uh, Lynch show up instead of Gabby playing, especially in the game that determines the lead for the Pac-12. And the strike out there of Kinsley Washington, one down. Bree Perez, the shortstop, will step in. It's seven left-handers in the lineup for the Bruins. Kelly Lynch in her last 16, in, uh, 16 innings has allowed 15 hits, 14 runs, and six home runs. So can she uh, change course here and contain one of the most potent lineups in the country? 
A team that can hit the long ball, but uh, much more reliant, much more interested in what their batting average and their OPS is. Perez did have a three-run home run in game one of the series to help the Bruins get the win on Friday night. Two down. Key for Lynch is those base on balls if she can stay ahead in the count, really attack the zone early. She is a much better pitcher. Again, using that rise ball, screw ball, off speed combination. Aliyah Jordan, the junior from Chula Vista. 346 on the year. She too has a home run in the series. That's that one up foul. And that's that's the pitch you have to be careful with. Lynch does have that rise ball that when it's working can be really jumpy at the top of the zone, but if she floats it at all, if she leaves it over the dish, UCLA can punish it. They can elevate it. And we've seen Aaliyah Jordan take a pitch from high to higher and over the trees. Three one to Jordan. Former Pac-12 batting champ and an All-American draws the walk here with two outs. Well, and that's why she's an All-American. She has an All-American eye. Understands her strike zone. And here comes Rachel Garcia. 400 hitter from Palmdale, California, on the U.S. Olympic team, hoping to head to Tokyo this summer. As of today, the games are still on and moving forward. She and uh, Bruin teammate Bubba Nichols, both on the roster, as is uh, current Arizona catcher Deja Mulipola. So three collegians on that U.S. team, hoping to bring the gold home. Garcia towering drive back to the wall off the top of the fence and it comes back in and they are going to rule it a home run. And Garcia gets UCLA on top two zip. Oh, and that's that rise ball I was talking about that you cannot leave over the plate. UCLA does a really good job of being able to get under it and to elevate it out of the park, and that's exactly what Garcia does. Look at the way she's gonna attack this pitch. It's middle out, and she just drives it. Reynolds going back. Good effort to try and get it, but off the top of the wall, actually looked like it may have gone off. Well, and you can see that the netting is right up yeah. against the fence, so it hit the netting, therefore the home run, but yet yeah, did it hit her glove as well as the fence? Yeah, that was a... Uh, Kind of hard to tell. Reynolds may have had a crack at that. At any rate, 2 nothing Bruins. Boy, those are the ones the outfielders dream about, right? An opportunity to try and rob a home run. One one count here to Delaney Wiz, the first baseman. Junior from Orchid, California. She's got hits in all three games so far. So we talked about the propensity for Lynch to throw the home run balls, and she's tossed one here. Is this a second? It is. Delaney Wiz goes back to back. The 
This is a UCLA team that has so much power. They attack pitches. Garcia hits hers on an 0-1 pitch. This is a 1-1 pitch battle, and Wiz just is gonna go up and get it, drive it out of the park. This is a towering shot. Again, a pitch that's supposed to be on the outer half of the plate, and it just is too sweet through the zone, and Delaney Wiz just peppers it. And look out, but here's Maya Brady, who hit not one but two home runs yesterday for the Bruins. Has driven in three, the freshman from Thousand Oaks, California. National Freshman of the Year last season. Mom Maureen was an outstanding collegiate player in her own day. All-American at Fresno State. I love the line from Kelly Enoy Perez. You know, we talk about the trees out beyond the fence here, and just over the trees is Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> she says, there are days in BP when Maya steps in. The ball is just, it sounds different off her bat, and I worry about the cars out on Sunset. <laughs> that they're going to get peppered. <laughs> And beyond, beyond that, the fancy homes of uh, Bel Air, which, you know, <laughs> you, don't want, you don't want to hit it that far. You don't want to take out windows over there. Yeah, or, or roof tiles and, uh, yeah. <laughs> 3-0 to Brady as Lynch is being very careful and Maya draws the walk. So the surprise starts. So Kelly Lynch was in the lineup today at first base. And Gabby Plain on the lineup card as uh, the pitcher in the flex. Sarah Willis, another one of their pitchers, was out in, is out in right field. And it looks like it's Kaya Gibson at first. And uh, even though we had seen Gabby Plain warming up pregame, uh, does not look like activity yet in the bullpen. May just be some activity now. Melissa Garcia is the seventh to the plate. This rally on two, a walk, and then back-to-back -back home runs for Rachel Garcia and Delaney Wiz. Garcia batting 500 in her last six games. You know, the Bruins had a, a, a COVID pause for a couple of weeks. And talking to Kelly Enoy Perez, they are getting their groove back of late. After they lost the first game of their Oregon series, they came back to win the next three and are now trying to take three or four from Washington. They swept or, uh, Oregon State last weekend, and that included a Rachel Garcia no-hitter. In trouble early for Heather Tars Huskies here as they have fallen behind three zip. And we uh, indeed welcome you to the wild, wild west. A state that's untouchable like Elliot Ness. Some crazy moments here already. Brady in scoring position, a 3-2 count to Garcia. Redshirt freshman from Chula Vista. He's driven in a couple already in the series. Gets under that back to the track and the catch is made by Jadlin Alchin at the base of the wall. But a couple of big bops, Smitty, for the early lead. Rachel Garcia with the two-run shot to get the Bruins on the board. And then Delaney Wise coming up with a solo shot right behind Garcia. Back-to-back -back jacks for the Bruins. Oh, out in the bullpen. Uh, Gabby playing, not sure if you could technically call that a warm-up, but she was playing some catch. And according to the lineup card, we got uh, pre-game the scheduled starter but instead it's Kelly Lynch 
and the Bruins knocked a couple out of the park and have jumped in front 3-0. It's been their M.O. all year. They have been fabulous attacking pitchers quickly and scoring runs in the first inning. And now the Huskies are up against it. Four, five, and six do up. Morgan Flores, the All-American catcher. Trying to send one deep, but not deep enough. Room for Kelly Gooden, one down. Back, back to your point about UCLA's strength in that first inning. They remind me a lot of Oklahoma. They're very strong offensively, and if you are intimidated at all, when you are in that circle in that first inning, you're going to struggle. And teams like that end up putting up a lot of runs up on the board. Flores sends one deep back to the track, and Aliyah Jordan takes care of the two outs. Speaking of that Oklahoma lineup, they scored 20 runs again today for the fifth time this year. They wiped out Texas Tech. Yeah. They are ranked number one in the country, a step in front of UCLA. Jocelyn Allo uh, hit another home run. Jana Johns hit her third in three games. As Kelly Lynch steps in. Megan Faramo has retired the first five she's seen. These two teams, uh, you know, we talked about them squaring off in the World Series in 2019. They were the regular season co-champs. They also met in the World Series in the quarterfinals in 2017. Washington eliminated the Bruins that day. So they, uh, these players are accustomed to making deep runs at Oklahoma City and you'd have to say, Smitty, uh, they would be odds on favorites to be a part of that uh, Elite Eight headed back to Hall of Fame Stadium this year. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, both these programs have the tools. They've got the, the arms needed, the offense. And how about the defense, Washington? One of the top defenses in the, in the country. And you know, Beth, you Pac-12 now, because of COVID, it's a, a four game series. You do have to wonder how much each of these programs do and don't want to show their aces to each other mm -hmm. because they figure at some point they're going to match up and hopefully, obviously not in a super, but in Oklahoma City at the Women's College World Series. And the more you see each other, the more you know each other. Lynch pops it up. Perez at short. Six up and six down for Megan Faremo in a 3-0 Bruin lead. As we head to the uh, bottom of the second, a couple of home runs for the Bruins, Rachel Garcia and Delaney Wiz. Off of the late announcement that Kelly Lynch was starting, we, you know, in all fairness to Kelly, we're not sure how much she was warming up uh, or how much activity pregame because Gabby Plain was listed as the starter in the lineup card that we get about half an hour before first pitch. And it looks, uh, Smitty, like they have already made a change here in the circle. And it will be Brooke Nelson now, the sophomore right-hander who will get the call. Has thrown just 19 innings this year, and uh, this uh, will be her 10th appearance. Well, Nelson has good velo. Likes to use a drop rise and change up as well. Coach Tara has been trying to get her to be able to apply those good innings that she has through the entire lineup, and really that's for most young pitchers, Beth, that really is the, the secret sauce and the secret formula. Can you get through a lineup not just one time, but two or three times to have viable starts or performances for your team? Kelly Lynch has moved back over to first base, which is where she had been penciled in originally in the starting lineup. So uh, obviously we... Uh, we don't have any ability to be in that Washington dugout to see exactly what may have happened for the late 
pitching change, but uh, the Bruins don't particularly care one way or the other. They're going to take their wax, and uh, right now uh, they are in first place in the Pac-12 and looking to stay there. They need to beat the Huskies to remain on top. And in line for another Pac-12 championship. They still have Arizona left on the schedule. The eight-time national champs making some noise. So is Arizona State uh, this year in the Pac-12. These are also two teams that uh, are hopefuls to host regionals and possibly super regionals. As you see the resume for Brooke Nelson. Eight, nine, and then the top for UCLA. High hopper back to Nelson. Has time to make the play one down, and Tessa Malaulu is retired. Good job by Nelson to go back and get that high hopper. Doesn't panic on it. This is Kelly Gooden, the nine hitter, as good as a uh, and second leadoff pretty much with that 371 average. Terrific speed from the left side of the box. Out of Seal Beach, California. Hitless in the first two games and then went three for three last night. Second team All-American. That is her game through the left side, and that'll turn the order over to Kinsley Washington with one on and one out. Hey, tonight's Sunday night baseball game is uh, just down the road at Chavez Ravine, staying in Los Angeles for the Dodgers and the Padres. San Diego has taken two of three thus far in the series. Coverage begins at 6 Eastern on ESPN and your ESPN app with baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown. Back-to-back -back nights for Fernando Tatis Jr. to hit Two home runs on Friday and Saturday. Washington struck out her first time up. Three hits, a couple of walks already for the UCLA Swingers. Runner goes, Bates applies the tag, and they got her on the throw down from Flores. Two out. Well, that's one of the best combos in the business. Morgan Flores behind the dish, so strong, quick pop time. And none better than Sis Bates at covering the bag. Pitch on the outside corner, and Flores is just gonna pop up, get that ball down to Bates. And look at the way that Bates is gonna grab this ball and apply that tag, just boom, goes right down on Gooden. Now a one-two count to Washington. Yeah, those two are as good as it gets. Flores, the grad student. Bates also the grad student. They've been together five years now for UW. Part of the reason that this is one of the top defensive teams in the nation, only 16 errors on the season. 985 fielding percentage. And give Gabby a lot of love in the circle. She is obviously a very high profile strikeout pitcher, but when the ball is put in play, her defense has been stellar behind her. Slow roller to third, silent rain, Espinoza has it. And that'll take care of business. 3-0 Bruins as we head to the third. Draft coming up this week for the NFL. We are inching closer to the Women's College World Series and the mayhem of the NCAA tournament. Beth Mowens and two-time Olympic gold medalist Michelle Smith with you. Bruins popped a couple of home runs in the first inning to grab the lead. Seven, eight, and nine for 
Washington. The Huskies sent down in order in innings one and two. Winner of this one is in first place all alone in the Pac-12. It's all about the regular season. They do not have a conference tournament. Pac-12 champ gets the automatic bid to the NCAAs as Espinoza is retired, one down. The Pac with the number two strength of schedule as a conference, SEC number one. I was looking at my nitty gritty sheets uh, earlier today. Oh, you're already into the NCAA nitty gritty. That's a breakdown yeah. of who they played, who they beat, and all kinds of good numbers. Mm -hmm. RPIs. That one's fouled down the right field line. Sarah Willis getting just her uh, fourth appearance in the field. She's uh, one of their pitchers as well, a terrific young talent. Ontario, California, so a nice moment for her back in the uh, LA area. But if you uh, if you look into your nitty gritties and your your RPIs, you know they're going to announce 20 sites at the end of the month, the NCAA, and out of those 20, 16 will be the hosts for the regionals when we unveil the field selection Sunday, May 16th. Sarah Willis gets a hold of one, and welcome home, Sarah Willis. The Southern California native touches them all. First career home run for Willis. <laughs> how about that? And how about having your first career home against, the home run against UCLA? Look at the way Willis is going to load this up. Great timing. Pitch on the inside corner, and she's just going to get it barreled up. Really good job of getting quick hands to the ball on the inside corner and just takes this out of the yard. Talking about so opportunities. Coach, ooh, keep me in yeah. the lineup. <laughs> yeah. Pinch hitter DP yesterday went one for three. Gets the opportunity to start today, and... Coach called her a stud athlete. Mm. Just needed she to get gives, her more reps. Yeah, she gives them some versatility. So does Kelly Lynch. They've got a couple of uh, pitchers who rake, uh, and you can you know keep them in the lineup and move some parts around. Well, and how about uh, that home run coming on an 0-2 pitch? So mistake by Faremo, and Willis leaves the yard. And here's another uh, Southern Californian, Huntington Beaches, Jalen Alchin. Top five recruit who chose the Huskies. Pulls that one down the line, and Jordan has it two down. And here comes the top in All-American Sis Bates. Bates. Grounded to second, back in the first inning. Four years of 50 hits or better. Got room in foul territory, and the basket catch, is it made? Yes, it is. Perez there defensively. And Bates is easily retired. Right in front of her own dugout, they're coaching her up, saying, you got this, and she does. Striking early and striking often, Michelle. That's what UCLA does best. And it is Rochelle Garcia going yard. Taking that ball off the netting. That's a two-run shot. And how about Delaney Wiz right behind her? Back-to-back -back jacks by this potent offense for UCLA, just so many tools in that toolbox, can score in multiple ways with average, with power, really good eyes, watching pitches through the zone. So just a really fun offense to watch. Maybe not as much fun to pitch against. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Here's a look at your game track. Look at the run differential, plus 40 now in the first inning this season. Sarah Willis countered with a solo home run to get Washington on the board. Interesting nugget uh, from our statistician extraordinaire, Karen Johns. Delaney Wiz has been a part of all three back-to-back -back jack situations for UCLA hitters this year. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. That's a lot of box scores you got to go through right there. Yeah. Well done, KJ. <laughs> it's exactly. <laughs> Two, three, and four, and we're told that we also need to give an assist to James Urbinus, the uh, All-American Sports Information Director for UCLA Softball. Thank you, James. <laughs> we showed you those home run balls because they are uh, due up here in the bottom of the third. Heart of the order to face Brooke Nelson, who is the second pitcher in the game, the third pitcher we have seen on a lineup card today. A late scratch of Gabby Plain. Kelly Lynch pitched in that first inning, and then Brooke took over in the second. That one's hit a long way. Gone for Bree Perez. Third already of the day for the Bruins. This Bruin team can make adjustments pitch to pitch. It doesn't matter what they see. They don't need an inning. They don't need two or three at-bats. Pitch to pitch, they make adjustments. This is a changeup that is just laid over the middle of the plate. Look at the way that she just delays her swing just enough to barrel this up. Off-speed pitch, little sweet. She's a little early, delays her swing, barrels it up and drives it out of the yard. Just so many great hitters through this lineup that make really good adjustments. Fitting that that was... Uh peppering the roof of the batting cages out there beyond the right field wall here at Easton Stadium. May have rolled out through the trees onto the streets of Sunset Boulevard towards the front gate of Bel Air. Checking traffic updates in the greater Los Angeles area, which could take some time. Aaliyah Jordan. Let's see if it's contagious for the Bruins. One of them hits it out. Everybody wants to hit it out. Absolutely. And how about Perez? That's her ninth home run of the year, and I believe that leads the Bruins oh. in home runs. So Perez, the shortstop, flashes the leather and arrows up balls and send them yard. Matches Michelle Smith's home run tally when she led America in home runs <laughs> in that legendary season of what? What year was that, Schmitte? Uh, when you hit nine out, was that 86, 87? 88, 89. 88, is, yeah. Yeah, you're trying yeah, to make yeah. yourself younger and younger. <laughs> hey, it was, we had a telephone pull as a bat back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> how do, obviously, obviously you can hit the weight room, right, Smitty? But how, how else do you add power the way Perez has to her swing this year? So I think with a lot of these uh, smaller stature, the five foot four type hitters that are maybe a, a buck 30, it's all about rotational. It's all about quickness and ability to just have that bat head just explode, whip through the zone. The ball is harder, the bats are lighter, so ability to just be super quick and rotational with that body, just to, to drive it out of the yard. And you can really see, look at the way her hands are gonna be quick. So her hands go from shoulder right to contact. Look how quick that is. And so when you have a short explosive swing, and I like to say short to long through, so your hands are short to contact and then your follow through is long and aggressive, that's when the ball really explodes off the barrel. Yeah, you hear a lot of hitting coaches talk about, you know, contact on the ball at that split second before your, you know, it's behind your hands, if you will. Correct. Or in front of your hands, if you will, just before you slingshot the bat through. Right, because that's when the bat is the quickest, and that's when you want that collision between ball and bat. Garcia hit a home run back in the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Rachel missed some time earlier this year with an injury. And obviously they, you know, want to win another uh, national championship with her, but well aware of her responsibilities with the Olympic team as well. She won't be practicing with them this year, but uh, of course you want to keep her 100% for Team USA by July. So that's kind of the balance, both as a hitter and a pitcher, that uh, the coaching staff is working through with Rachel as she grounds out two down really look at even Gabby Plain workload management I think G Wars is another one when you start looking at some of these elite programs that really have a more defined ace now granted you know UCLA does have the luxury of having Megan Faramo who's an all-american in her own right and outstanding but some of you know you Washington Oklahoma some of these programs where you really start to look at the arms and who they have Tennessee's another one with Ashley Rogers workload management as we get from toward the postseason is, is going to be crucial. Delaney Wiz, the solo home run in the first. I think we could be in line for a uh, a terrific collision, you know, in the in the super regionals of a team that's going to try and win with that one superstar yeah. ace and another team that has a staff of two or three, even using a reliever. Um, as a specialist, which is something that uh, we haven't seen much of softball until recent years. Grounds it to third. Silent Rain Espinoza is there. But another one on the board thanks to the long ball, Smitty. Ninth of the year for Perez that leads the Bruins. She sits on the changeup and sends it yard. 4 to 1 UCLA. It's a slugfest at Easton Stadium. Three taters for the Bruins, a solo shot for UW as we head to the fourth. Winner of this one is alone in first place in the Pac-12. Beth Mullins and Michelle Smith with you. Two, three, and four, so you've got some home run potential here for the Huskies facing Megan Faramo. Retired the first seven she faced, and then Sarah Willis took her deep. Fifteen home runs, 44 runs batted in for Klingler on the season. Slugging 831 on the year with a 500 on base percentage. Big numbers for Bailey. Flew out to center back in the first. And that came inside and hit her. I think it got her arm shield. We're still feeling it, though. Yeah. Leadoff is on board here for Washington. Yeah. You know, it looks like Klinger, you know, she steps in a little bit. And pitch coming in on the inside corner. It does go off that shield. Mm. Of course, the rule in softball is if it's coming at you, you don't have to get out of the way as long as you're staying in that batter's box, but you cannot lean in. That's only the third hit batter for Megan Faramo all year. Yeah, she doesn't give up a lot of free passes. Only eight walks coming into this game and two hit pitches. That's her third of the year. She struck out Sammy Reynolds on a rise ball back in the first. Mm 
Beth, and that's the reason why Faremo is tops in the NCAA with a strikeout to base on ball ratio of over 14, 14.25 coming into the weekend. Stays low and away from Reynolds for the strike. Ooh, that looked like the exact same pitch in the exact same spot called the ball, two and one. Hangs on the change and just foul off the sidewall out there and right. Well, Reynolds, good, good job of really uh, turning on this off-speed pitch. Slightly out in front of that, just misses it. Mm. She waits, she lets that ball travel just a bit more. She'd be trotting around those bases. Oh, with their ability to go yard on him, no lead is safe. Mm -mm. Well, in this series already, seven home runs in the series by both teams combined coming into game four. And obviously, uh, four runs are four home runs already in the game. So uh, it's a tough series to be in the circle. Mm. Oh, look at the emotion from Faremo gets the strikeout. One down. Yeah, how competitive is Faremo? Wanting this out, the way she's going to explode on the outside corner with this pitch, she's going to get Reynolds to swing through it. So it's a rise ball that's just really well located. Second time she's struck out Sammy Reynolds on the rise ball. First time on the inside corner, this one on the outside corner. Those are her only two strikeouts so far. Here's Morgan Flores. Flew out to left in the second inning. To short for one over to first. Not in time. But the line out for Flores, two down. Good reaction from Bree Perez. <laughs> Flores, really good positioning right up the middle. Nice throw over to. Delaney Wise not able to glove that up for the double play. I don't think that was a shift, Smitty, but she was definitely uh, yeah. drifting over towards second base with that runner on first. Absolutely great out. Scouting, knowing tendencies of hitters. Well, we talk a lot about Sis Bates, the shortstop for Washington, and deservedly so, but Kelly Inor Perez says that her shortstop, Bree, is probably the most underrated shortstop in the country. Yeah. With what she does I, uh, with her glove and her bat. Yeah, Beth, there are a lot of quality shortstops this year. Start looking at Sis Bates, Bree Perez, Taylor Pleasance out of LSU, Aaron Coffell at Kentucky. I mean, you start looking and naming off the amount of talent in that position this year. I think it's one of the deepest shortstop positions uh, in, in recent years. Mm -hmm. Straight down the corner to Noel Key. Got to fly out in a second. the glove of Washington and out to Jordan and right. And that will bring the tying run to the plate for the Huskies here with two outs. The 
Kinsley Washington, good job of going back on this nice stretch, but just off the tip of her glove out onto the green. Oh, he dumping it out to right field for a base hit. Kelly Lynch is due up. Let's see what's on the docket here for Washington, or is it just the insertion of a pinch runner, possibly? Yep. Livy Sheely is the pinch runner here. He can re-enter. So Kelly Lynch, who was the late uh, addition as the starting pitcher, a couple of home run balls, and now an opportunity to strike back. Two on with two out. Four home runs, 21 RBI on the year for Kelly. Megan Framo immediately challenges her underneath the hands. So she's working a screwball. Not to let her get extended. He gets her on the outside corner. Going east to west here, one and one. former number one rated recruit coming out of high school. In fact, both these players, National Prep Players of the Year, now toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Lynch into the netting. off the net. <laughs> Almost caught that off the netting on the ricochet. Looking good on two outs this series. Ten two out hits, four two out RBIs through the first three games. Two, two to Lynch, two on, two outs. Kelly protects. And Heather Tarr was ready to wave both of those runners home. This is where it's the advantage with two outs. Second, you're looking at contact, you are flying. back in your living room. Yeah, great battle. Washington with three straight trips to the national semifinals. 2018, they were in the championship series. And for UCLA, three straight deep runs at the World Series, including the 2019 national championship and a semifinal walk-off win over Washington en route. Good fight from Lynch. being very effective on that inside corner, making sure she does not miss that corner, allow Lynch to get extended. Struck her out! 
Up to the penthouse with the rise ball for the K to end the threat. How about Megan Faramo using the rise ball in the outside corner? Sets her up under the hands. Rise ball for the strikeout to get out of the jam. Downtown Los Angeles, our backdrop as we check out the ESPN.com USA Softball Top 10 with the Bruins checking in at number two right behind Oklahoma. And the Washington Huskies number four this week. Uh, Florida did suffer a loss, but then won the South Carolina series. Oklahoma also suffered their first loss of the season, but then wiped out Texas Tech. Alabama just uh, took a pair from Louisiana this weekend. A big non-conference uh, couple of wins for the Tide. A lot of the usual suspects up there at the top, all fighting for a return trip to the Women's College World Series, all looking to be hosts for the regionals and supers. Maya Brady to start things off here. Six, seven, and eight coming around for the Bruins. All the home runs on the board via the home run ball for both sides today. Bree Perez, Rachel Garcia, Delaney Wiz have all hit one out for UCLA. Sarah Willis for Washington. Maya walked her first plate appearance. Yeah, Kelly, I talked about finding our flow as a Bruin lineup. Really thinks that the best is yet to come. And a base hit for Maya Brady. Gets through the right side. Of course, you know at UCLA, it all builds towards the postseason, Smitty, and it's all about being at your best um, in May and early June, and that's what the Bruins are trying to build towards once again. Absolutely, managing all the arms, getting everybody the amount of reps they need, and, and dealing with a strange year. You know, it's one of the things she talked about during the pause. Getting everybody the reps that they need. Mm -hmm. This is Alyssa Garcia. Three out to center in the first. Of course, the irony is they talked a lot about how they have not been reliant on the home run ball this year, and now it's New Jack City <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> exactly. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, oh, that one sounded good, but it will come up a bit short. Room for Alchin <laughs> with the can of corn, one down. Tessa Malulu grounded back to the pitcher in the second. And we'd like to welcome those of you that have been watching the uh, Georgia Tennessee matchup. We've got a 4 1 game here at Easton Stadium in Westwood as the Huskies try and turn two. Bates to Klingler over to Kelly Lynch. They will get one for the second out of the inning. Here's how we got here Sarah Willis, a home run for Washington, but the damage done by UCLA with three home run balls. Garcia and Wiz went back to back in the first. Bree Perez added another one in the third. Beth Mullins along with two-time Olympic gold medalist, Michelle Smith. Winner of this one sits alone in first place in the Pac-12 Conference. In that typical Washington UCLA series, a lot of emotion, a lot of big swings, defensive plays.
0-2 pitch. Just outside to Kelly Gooden here in the nine spot in the lineup. Kelly singled and then was caught stealing. Back in the second. And Gooden pops it up, shallow left center. Coming on to call for it is Jadlin Alchin. 4-1 UCLA as we head to the fifth. This is how things uh, went in the first inning, Michelle. Home run balls. Well, Garcia taking advantage of a rise ball left sweet over the zone, and she just pounds this out of the park, a two-run shot. And then in typical UCLA fashion, look at Delaney going yard. This is a solo shot right after Garcia. So UCLA showing that power. That coach says, we're not a home run hitting team. We can hit home runs, but we're not a home run hitting team. <laughs> <laughs> they added a third from Bree Perez, and that's the 4-1 lead. Here's the Pac-12 standings for you with UCLA a shade in front. In fact, if Washington were to win this game, they would move into the top spot based on win percentage. Bree Perez, left side, one down. And we uh, welcome you, UCLA and Washington. Beth Mullins, along with two-time Olympic gold medalist Michelle Smith. An entertaining matchup. Things got off a little crazy start. We were expecting to see Gabby Plain as the starter, but it was Kelly Lynch in the first inning and now on to Brooke Nelson. And meanwhile, Megan Faremo still slinging it for the Bruins. Well, it's been a, a tough series to be in the circle. Seven home runs coming into today's deciding rubber match. Uh, four already hit here this afternoon. So 11 home runs given up by the pitchers. And you know, when you look at the quality of these offense, offensive bats, really good defense, it's that typical series between Washington and, and UCLA. Sarah Willis, the home run hitter in the third, her first career shot. Let's look at the changeup from Paremo, one and two. A couple of perennial contenders for the national championship, couple of head coaches that are both alums, and uh, women that have won national championships back at their old schools. And a strikeout of Willis, two down. Fourth for Framo. Here's a look at Heather Tarr. Played on their very first World Series team back in 1996. And now a couple of decades back at her alma mater, highlighted by the 2009 National Championship. And the winningest coach in Washington history. Couple of Pac-12 titles, they shared that last one with UCLA. And then they both were amongst the final four teams still standing at the World Series with the Bruins eliminating Washington and going on to win their 12th NCAA title. O2 to Jadlin Alchin in the nine spot in the lineup. Faremo doing a good job, efficient 63 pitches here in the top of the fifth inning. Her typical self, not giving up a lot of free passes, just one hit batter this afternoon. Seventy percent of her pitches have been strikes today. I bet that's one of the reasons why she's tops in the NCAA at strikeout to base on ball ratio at 14.25 coming into the weekend. Pulled down the first baseline, Wiz handles it, steps on the bag. 
side for Lawrence uh, headed to Jacksonville in all likelihood as the overall number one big draft for the quarterbacks. Trey Lance, Mac Jones, Justin Fields all could go in the top ten as well. Looks like we've got another pitching change here to Pat Moore, third pitcher of the day for UW. Not a lot of innings for Pat Moore, just 14 coming in. Needs to work on keeping those free passes to a minimum using our defense. Keep the ball in the park. Always easier said than done. Facing the top of the lineup. Again, uh, not aware of anything that uh, happened to Gabby playing pregame. Uh, Gabby uh, was the expected starter. She was out in the bullpen pregame. She's been throwing out there. Of course, in the big picture, Michelle, this also gives Heather Tarr a chance to look at her other pitchers in what we would call a high leverage situation against a big time opponent. And uh, how do they conduct themselves and can we count on them in the uh, in the postseason? All part of what these two coaching staffs do so well to prepare for deep runs into the postseason. Well, and I think they were trying to figure out early in the year you know, who was going to be the number two, and they had a couple of games that were kind of head scratchers. Like, uh, why is Washington having trouble with some mid-major teams? And it's because they've. They have struggled a little bit to try to find that arm behind Gabby Plain, and so they've pitched by committee. And Pat Moore, lefty, so she's got a typical lefty look with the curve, drop curve, change up, but behind Gabby Plain, they are, they are gonna use every arm available to get as many innings as they can. And they get the strikeout of the leadoff, Washington one down. Here's how they match up. Uh, pretty similar in uh, those categories for UCLA, the batting average and the scoring, both tops in the Pac-12. Same as well on uh, uh, defensively. I mean, these on paper, these clubs, you would expect a very tight series, a tight matchup. This is the rubber match game. UCLA winning with Garcia in the circle on Friday. Plain took game two against Faremo. And I still think the fact that we're not seeing Garcia and Plain in this important rubber match game is just limiting looks, knowing that they're going to see each other later down the road. Hopefully not in a, in a super regional, most likely in Oklahoma City at the Women's College World Series. Just like last uh, last time we saw him there. UCLA eliminating Washington in those semifinals before they went on to win their national championship. Bree Perez, a ground out and a home run today. Of course, they are quite familiar with one another. You know, Rachel Garcia has been around for five years, didn't play last year because she was away with the national team. But with Rachel around, UCLA is 11 and three against Washington. Trying for a 12th win as uh, Rachel is uh, in the hole here with helmet on, hoping she'll get an opportunity. Jordan's on deck ahead of her. And Pat Moore, a good start. A couple of strikeouts. Loving that lefty lefty matchup against Washington Perez and now Jordan. Got Sunday night baseball for you tonight. Cross town at Chavez Ravine. Dodgers hosting the San Diego Padres, seven Eastern. Our coverage begins at six with baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown. Local boy and no hit uh, specialist Joe Musgrove. We'll get the call for the Padres tonight. Yeah. 
Dodgers are uh, set to throw Dustin May. Well, Beth, back to your point about you know pitchers, these rookie pitchers for Washington. It's it's tough to get them work. And, and Coach mentioned to us before this series, it's not okay for a Washington to lose against a Dixie State or some of those mid-major mid teams they play early on. It's hard to get them enough looks. You have to throw your ace in Gabby Plain. But it is okay if you drop a game to UCLA, who's ranked second in the country. So it's that, that paradox of when do you get really good time and really good looks for your young pitchers in the circle. It's easier to use them in game three of this uh, Pac-12 series versus against teams earlier in the year that you are expected to lose. And, and let's face it, the committee, bad losses are, are worse than um, losses to uh, ranked teams. Mm -hmm. Lifted to left. Sammy Reynolds has it. We have completed five in Westwood in a 4-1 game. Welcome back to the Pac-12 on ESPN. Looks like uh, maybe a trip down Wilshire Boulevard. Neighboring Shut Westwood up. and UCLA Washington. Let's take a trip around the Pac-12, Smitty. Got five teams ranked in the top 11. Jesse Harper is now fourth all time, 87 career home runs. And Stanford picked up a win Friday night in Eugene, their first in a, a decade. They added another one today. Arizona also a winner earlier by a run over Utah. Yeah. Oregon, that rough patch we mentioned earlier, just four wins in their last 12 games. It's that time of year, they're gonna be tested. We are on to the sixth inning and the top of the lineup for Washington. All the runs scored on home runs. Sarah Willis for Washington. Bree Perez, Rachel Garcia, Danielle Wiz for UCLA. Perez calling for it. Terrific coverage at short, and they have kept Sis Bates off the bases. Yep. She's 0 for 3. Yeah, Sis Bates is one of the reasons this offense is so potent for Washington, and when you keep her at bay, you're more than likely going to keep them off the scoreboard. Perez, really good range, understanding her home field. Bailey Klingler. The top four in the lineup have only reached base once, and that was Klingler getting hit by a pitch, and she wraps that one right back up the middle for a single. Wow, this ball is smashed right past Faremo. Very lucky that did not hit her. Klingler, two home runs yesterday, has been seeing the ball really well lately. Great extension, just driving this ball right back up the middle, and that is so close to Megan Faremo. Sixth hit this series for Klingler. I'll bring up uh, Sammy Reynolds. This is the group that had two on base, brought the tying run to the plate back in the fourth inning, but uh, could not do any damage. Kudos to Megan Faremo for her outing today. She's given up three hits. Game two, she took the loss. Gave up 10 hits and five in a third. And they will again bring the tying run to the plate here in the sixth with Klingler and Reynolds aboard. Washington starting to be aggressive. Klingler on a first pitch swinging, base hit up the middle. Reynolds as well, aggressive early in the count, swinging. And you've got your number four hitter up, Morgan Flores. From Cypress, California. Boy, it's good to hear the fans back as well. They're starting to return to the game. That's a fouled out of play. 
you know, the pandemic has uh, been rough on a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. It, it affected Morgan Flores, or coach Heather Tarr was talking to us about it. Really a soul searching time for Morgan to at one point sort of lose her love for the game and then rediscover her passion for it. Unquestionably one of the leaders of this Husky team. She was the Pac-12 home run leader a couple of years ago and hit one yesterday for Washington. And some uh, chit-chat with her coach, Heather Tarr. You're looking for a particular pitch here, Smitty? You, you're splitting the plate in half? Well, I think if for Faremo, Washington's been really aggressive in this inning. There's two hits coming on a first pitch swinging, 0-1 count. So I think with 0-2 right now to Flores, who's got nine home runs on the year and could potentially tie up this game, they need to make sure they're not putting anything too sweet through the middle of the plate when You've got an 0-2 count, and for Flores, she's thinking just that, looking for the mistake, making sure she's not getting elevated on a pitch that's up at her eyeballs. Let's see if they mix speeds here, 0-2 to Flores. And so that's the waist. 2020's Johnny Bench Award winner. And on the USA Softball Player of the Year watch list, paired down to 25 players this week. Really good take by Morgan Flores, fifth year senior. Actually, I think she's a sixth year because she had to redshirt a year. She blew out her knee, came back, and that's part of the, the issues that she's had, trying to really fall in love with the game again, as you mentioned, Beth. Three straight balls, and the count is full. Really good takes by Flores. Three-two pitch. Fouls it off. Run at the plate here for the Huskies in the top of the sixth. In a fight for first place in the Pac-12. See for Ramo comes in with the off-speed pitch. Dump it down at the knees or below. Something unhittable. Two on with one out after back-to-back -back singles. Bailey Klingler and Sammy Reynolds. Washington five of 24 with runners in scoring position. This is only their second chance today. Eighth pitch of this at-bat coming up. And that one is playable. Two down. Really good battle by Faremo. And great takes by Flores to get the full count. Laying off pitches outside of the zone. Faremo using that rise ball effectively. Tenth fly out today for Faremo. Top of the four strikeouts. And uh, let's see, Noel He was getting ready to step in. 
Singled in the fourth, also had a hit yesterday off of Foremo. Seven home runs on the year. As their primary designated player this season. Ooh. <laughs> Kirk screwed her right into the dirt. Looks like uh, takes a really aggressive swing on that back leg. And it gives out just a little bit. Oh, that did not look comfortable at all. No. Ooh. Seems to be okay. Pitch. Right down Sunset Boulevard. One and two. And Framo can throw that rise ball a couple different planes, put it just above the belt, and then up at your eyeballs. Klingler at second, Reynolds at first. Tying run at the plate for UW, top six with two outs. Noel He in the box facing Megan Faremo. Got under the rise, into the netting. Faremo continuing to challenge these big hitters for Washington in the upper half of the zone. Induces the pop-up of Flores, trying to do the same. And he. He sends one out to deep center. Room there for Brady to make the catch, and the threat is ended. A couple left on. 4 1 Bruins. Big run differential in the first inning all season long for the Bruins, and uh, it's uh, playing out here today so far. Three spot with a couple of home run balls to get the party started, Michelle. 0-1 uh, pitch and Rachel Garcia sends this ball out of the yard, a two-run shot that puts the Bruins on the board first. And how about Delaney Wiz coming up right behind Garcia, second time this year that Garcia has thrown the ball out of the yard and Delaney Wiz as well. So the Bruins using the home run ball efficiently. And look who's leading us off here for the UCLA Bruins with the 4-1 lead over Washington. Garcia, Wiz, and Brady do up. Bottom six. So UCLA three outs away from a win and a, a hold on first place in the Pac-12. More of Gabby playing in the bullpen. We've seen her out there on several occasions today. She was in the starting lineup, the expected starter, uh, but then the late switch to Kelly Lynch. And after that, Brooke Nelson and now Pat Moore. Even if the Bruins do get the win, um, they did lose one game yesterday, Oklahoma, even though they lost for the first time midweek to Georgia. They came back and looked strong this weekend. I would guess Oklahoma would hold on to the top spot. Yeah.
UCLA, however, is number one in the RPI, and that will only get stronger after a Washington series. Mm. Garcia hold. She did. Picked up a couple more wins this week, including a no-hitter against Oregon State. So she has moved up now. She's seventh all-time in wins at UCLA. Fourth all-time in strikeouts for the Bruins. And she draws the walk here. Oh, by the way, she's hit now in 20 of her 22 games this season and is on base here for the second time this afternoon. They're gonna lift her here for a pinch runner, it would appear. Anna Vines will run for Rachel. Vines has seen more playing time recently too at second base. Not in the starting lineup, however, today. And Wiz, the home run in the first, grounded out to third in the third inning. Delaney Wiz with that home run, it was her eighth of the year, just doing a really good job of protecting Garcia. Start to see that power after power, those back-to-back -back jacks. She's got hits in all four games in the series. For the uh, transfer from Loyola Marymount, was two years there, and now second year at UCLA. Runner goes, and Vines has a stolen base. In the scoring position here with nobody out. UCLA keeping their foot on the gas, knowing that it's important to put them runs up on the board. Continue to test Washington, one of the top defenses in the country. Earlier in the game, Flores to Bates. Able to uh, retire the runners, but not this time. Vines with a good jump. <laughs> Off the end of the bat and a twister that will stay outside the line. Like a spinning always top. trouble. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't forget uh, Sunday Night Baseball coming your way tonight over at Chavez Ravine here in Los Angeles. The Padres are in town. They have taken two of the first three. The Dodgers trying to even things up tonight. Coverage begins at 6 Eastern on ESPN and your ESPN app. There's Dodgers World Series champs. UCLA Bruins, the reigning World Series champs. Players and coaches have heard a lot of comparisons around town to the Dodgers. You know, they are the, they are the defenders. They have uh, just about everybody back. They are strong in all three phases of the game. Think about Kershaw, you think about Rachel Garcia. Mm -hmm. And a strikeout of Delaney Wiz, one down. Nice pitch by Pat Moore, taking a little bit off of it. Delaney Wiz has been very hot as of late, so that is a big get for Pat Moore. That's her third strikeout in her two innings of relief here. Just, just dumps this ball down. Look at the movement. Look at how this is going to start above the, the knee and just dump down. Comes back with it again. It's an especially tough pitch to lefties. 
Walk in the first for Maya Brady and then the single to right in the fourth. Third appearance for Pat Moore. I like the fact that she's uh, continuing to use all her pitches against a very heavy left-handed lineup for UCLA. Seven of the nine are lefties. And they're all in a row here, starting with yeah. Brady. Bottom of the lineup and then the top three. Can she make it three games in a row with the dinger? Nope. Another strikeout for Moore, two down. Moore just being aggressive with that curveball, runs that. Right away from Brady, really good locates on the corner, really good break on it. Has faced six and struck out four. Here's Alyssa Garcia. A couple of fly balls to center today. Top of the seventh, by the way, due up for Washington would be their six, seven, and eight hitters. They've had a couple of chances. Yep. The tying run at the plate in the fourth and the tying run at the plate again in the sixth inning and could not get anybody home. Their lone digit on the scoreboard is the Sarah Willis solo home run from the third inning. Beth, and if you go back to that first inning, you look at the 40 runs that UCLA has outscored their opponents in that first inning. You you, know, you erase that first inning, and this is a again a typical UCLA Washington battle. Don't have a hit yet in the game with a runner in scoring position to the Bruins. Three of there, four or excuse me, all four of their runs off of home runs. A two-run shot from Garcia in the first, solo blast from Wiz and Perez. One of their five hits, three, three are the home runs, so. I, I, I do have to laugh a little bit when Coach Inouye Perez says we are not a home run hitting team, but yet they have used the long ball very efficiently. It shows up on occasion. Yeah, in clumps. Ron, isn't it? Yeah, you, you, go ahead, Beth. I was going to say, you think of home runs at UCLA, you think of your old teammate, Stacy Moveman. Yeah, and yeah. the titanic blast that she launched out of this yard. Pat Moore striking out three in the six. Last chance coming up for you, Dub. Here's our uh, college softball game track for you. UCLA with the 4-1 lead. Three of those coming in the first inning off a couple of home run balls. Sarah Willis, a solo shot for Washington. And Bree Perez also with a, a home run for UCLA. Winner of this one is alone in first place in the Pac-12. And uh, the Bruins are three outs away from securing that top spot. Beth Mowens and two-time Olympic gold medalist Michelle Smith. Megan Faramo looking for the complete gamer here will face six, seven, eight in the Husky lineup. Frema looking like a different pitcher today. Nixon speeds, good job with her locates. Well, wow, that's the key right there. She's used that change up efficiently. And even though she doesn't get the call on that last pitch, it's showing up. It's in the minds of the hitters, keeping them off balance. 
that's relied on in defense. Just the four strikeouts so far. And a lot of fly balls. Well, Bethany, if you consider in game two that she lost, she pitched five and a third, gave up 10 hits, six runs, six earned runs. Very typical for Amo outing where she didn't walk anybody. She had the four or five Ks, but to come back now against the same team and really limit damage is impressive. And perhaps most important, she kept Sis Bates off the bases. Yeah. The leadoff was 0 for 3 today for Washington. <laughs> Kelly Lynch 0 for 2 with a pop-up and a strikeout. Missed a rise ball back in the fourth inning when they left two on base. They stranded two more in the sixth. Could not cash in their opportunities. Everybody has problems doing that against UCLA. <laughs> One down as Faremo gets the strikeout. Well, and the other thing we're seeing from Faremo today as well is just that emotion and that ability to really come through with a top-notch start. Updated to include Arizona's win this afternoon in third place behind Washington and UCLA on the top. They have not played as many games uh, because they had the COVID pause end of March into mid-April. They lost uh, their Cal series. They have Utah, Stanford, and Arizona, so three Pac-12 series still to go. Could come down to that road trip to Tucson to close out the regular season. Megan Vandegrift is the pinch hitter here. hit back up the middle. <laughs> Vandegrift gonna come through the box, keeps her feet in, really good footwork. It's a pitch on the inside corner and just blasts it right past Kinsley Washington. It's Megan's second hit of the series, and some life here in the seventh. Sarah Willis, the home run hitter back in the third. First of her career for the uh, freshman from Ontario, California. There you go. Willis with her first career home run. I know, coming back home and hitting a shot in the UCLA ballpark. <laughs> That's one you're going to remember. Yeah, you get a fist pump or two for that. It's a huge shot for the freshman. See, I'm sure Emma will want to talk about it. Hit 0 and 2. Struck her out on a changeup in the fifth after that solo home run on a 0 2 pitch in the third. delivers the opposite way. That'll find the gap out in right center. And they're going to wave the runner home. The throw to the plate, not in time. Van 
Vandegrift scores all the way from first. Well, Bethan, we just had the conversation that the home run came on an 0-2 pitch. Mistake from Faremo, another 0-2 pitch to Willis, and she is just gonna capitalize. Pitch on the outside corner that is above the knees, and she just drives it. Oppo into the gap, lets it travel. And Washington trying to make something happen here in the top of the seventh. For the third time, they will bring the tying run to the plate with one out. Jadlin Alchin, the number nine hitter. Flew out to right and then grounded back to the pitcher. What a showing for Sarah Willis, her first career home run, her first career RBIs. Usually shows up in the circle, but she's getting a chance to play the field and take some hacks today. Absolutely. It's a good chance I think uh, we'll see her in the lineup from here on out. <laughs> Earning her way in. Oh, and here's the thing too, their remaining schedule is Utah down at the bottom of the standings and then at Stanford to finish the regular season. They've got a very good chance for a strong finish. Keep the pressure on UCLA. Archon fouls it back. Two strike count. Alchin. Just threw the bat at it. Getting rid of it, making sure she's in a position to decide her own fate. Late in the game, you have to be ultra con ultra careful. If it's close, you gotta get rid of it. Frame over, 100 pitches now. Struck her out, two down. And Washington down to its final out, and fittingly, it's their All-American shortstop, Sis Bates, who will look to extend it. Framo using that rise ball effectively. Top of the zone, really good movement, explosive. Takes Alchin up the ladder. Sis 0 for 3 so far. She is the tying run. Oh, and 1. Smitty impressed by that one, or is that yeah. a little, little, little sweet, sweet on that bone? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was... Uh, Bates let it go, and then chases the rise, 0-2. And, and it's gonna walk back and try to regroup. I'm sure Garcia had a little message to Faremo. All right, we're up 0-2, let's, let's not be too much around the zone. Work on that good setup pitch. To short, Perez gloves it. Ball game, Bruins. Four, two, UCLA over Washington. They take three of the four over the weekend and hold on to first place in the Pac-12. How about Megan Faremo after giving up 10 hits? Giving up just six today and picking up the complete game win. Eighth complete game for Faremo. 12 and 3 on the season, and UCLA.
takes care of business at home, winning three of four from UW. And they stay in first place in the Pac-12 Conference for our entire crew. And the two-time Olympic gold medalist, Michelle Smith. I'm Beth Mowens. Thanks for being with us. Up next, the draft featured so long from LA.